But uh, hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. I want to give credit to Detroit Lion fans today because you were right. A couple years ago when the Lions, Quinn Tricia, uh, decided to draft Jeff Okuda, Lion fans stood up and said, this is the wrong pick. Pick a quarterback. But you had Justin Herbert on the or t- uh, Tua. Could have gone that way. You said draft Derrick Brown. You know what uh, Bob Quinn said? He said, you guys are criticizing me because you said I'm taking the qu- cornerback too high. If a guy is a good football player, it doesn't matter what position he plays. It doesn't matter uh, what position you draft him in. You take that guy. He was dead wrong. Lion fans, applaud yourself. You were on the money. Because, as we all know, the Lions have traded Jeff Okuda to the Atlanta Falcons for basically nothing. A fifth-round draft pick. Now, on the surface, you can say, wow. That was a bad trade, and it was, but it was the right move from this standpoint. You're going to save $5.2 million in cap space. You did not want to pay uh, Okuda's fifth-year option of $11 million because now he's a backup corner. Uh, You brought in Cam Sutton, Emmanuel Mosley. You still have Josh Jacobs on the roster. Jeff Okuda is a backup corner on this team. You're not paying that guy $11 million. Right, and I, and I don't think the pick can be judged. I mean, I don't think the um, trade can be judged until we see what happens with all the picks. So, But it was a good move for the Lions. You know, they, and, you know, normally when you get a new GM and you get new people in, they want to bring their own people in. They want to sure. draft their own guys. They want to have their, a fresh new start. And you can kind of see what's kind of happening now, how the team is evolving. Right, and even when – the front office of the coaches talked about Jeff Okuda. They didn't say things like, well, he's a great player and everything. Here's what they say. Well, you know, he's working really hard and he's a nice guy. In other words, well, those are the, those are the, the yeah. buzzwords for <laughs> he he's a good person, but he can't play. Right. And <laughs> supposedly Jeff Okuda is a great guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the locker room likes him. The public wasn't on him as bad as I thought they were going to be because he wasn't like Eric Ebron, who's on social media every day, dogging the fans, dogging Detroit, saying that you guys are uh, not treating me right. He just kept quiet, tried to do his thing, but it didn't work out. He wasn't good enough. And the other thing is, but didn't he go somewhere else and play well? Huh? Ebron, didn't he go somewhere else and play pretty good? He did, and then he stopped. Then he started dropping balls again. Uh, the quarterback left, didn't he? Didn't the quarterback? But he's st- yeah. But he started dropping no, balls. No, he just needed. Here's, he here's just needed an accurate thing. quarterback. No, here's what he <laughs> needed. He needed to be in a city where he wasn't viewed as a too high draft pick. He needed to go somewhere where, in Indianapolis, they didn't look at Eric Ebron as this tight end who was drafted too high in the draft. They just looked at it as a trade acquisition. So there was no pressure on him. I guess. Jeff Fakuda, and, and I'm going to make this prediction. Jeff Fakuda is going to be good in Atlanta. He doesn't have that expectation on him. He'll work hard. If he stays healthy, I think he will be a productive member. So this is going to be a good trade for both teams. I think so. But I, I don't know. I don't know how good he'll be in Atlanta. He'll be better in Atlanta than he could ever be in Detroit. How about that? I guess that's kind of a blank statement, but hey. hey man, that's, that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's why they have me here, to make strong opinions. <laughs> I don't think, I mean. <clears throat> he will be better in Atlanta than he ever could have been in Detroit. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Got that's, the pressure off him. Let's wish him luck. <clears throat> let's hope he does yeah, well. He's a good dude. Yeah. And you uh, want good people to do good things. Right. But, um. And we have a disagreement on this. He's a bust, but you don't want to call him a bust. No. See, I I think when you say bust, I think you say a a guy that's been just non-productive, can't play at all, 
was drafted and can't do anything. Like, that was just a bust. Like, pretty, that's what I can Pretty say. damn close. No, he's not a bust. <laughs> he played. He, he played. Right. Hey. A number three pick in the NFL is going to play. Hey, that's not his fault he was picked number three. It wasn't his fault. And he played. He played to the best of his abilities. And maybe he was overdrafted and people didn't. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Maybe. I mean, he, he, How about, yeah, he was. Yeah, well, he was overdrafted. by. But uh, this is not the current Lions' fault. This is Quintricia. Right. Well, well, he was overdrafted, and nobody, they didn't get it right when they were scouting him and looking at potential, what he could be. Because that's what draft picks are. That we You're looking at potentially how good can this guy be. And when you're drafting a cornerback at three, you're saying he's going to be – a really good, a special corner when you're drafting him that high. Well, yeah, but he uh, is not Sauce Gardner. He wasn't uh, Richard Sherman. That's obviously. what I'm saying. And those guys were but, the best of the best. But, you know, I'm going to blame part of this on Matthew Stafford. <laughs> How can you? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just, just say, hang on. Don't, don't look all indignant. How in the hell can Matthew Stafford get any blame for that? He, he's going to get blamed for this because Matthew Stafford, when he was here, he was such a baby. He didn't want any competition at the backup quarterback spot. That would have been a perfect time to draft Justin Herbert or Tua. Bring him in, develop them. And plus, a few years later, Matthew was like, peace out, I'm out of here. <laughs> All right, J- Jerry Alexander said, Lindsey being nice, it's hard for a professional athlete to call another professional athlete a bust. But we can say it for you, he was a bust. Jerry... I'm not calling another guy a bust. He's not doing it. <laughs> but but, but Matthew Stafford, that just be, you said he was a baby. You do you know directly he didn't want? Well, yes. First of all, first of all, he was good enough that nobody was going to threaten him for his position. That is true, but that's not the way he felt. The Lions never had. How, how can you go twelve years without a legitimate backup quarterback? 12 years. But honestly, how many times did Matthew Stafford really get hurt here in Detroit? Not much. That, that doesn't matter. It does matter if you're Drew. That's like, that's like who, who was um, Aaron Rodgers' backup for years? Who? Well, you know, Aaron Rodgers, you know who he backed up? Brett Favre. Yeah, he backed, but he was getting ready to replace Brett Favre. Yeah. Just like Steve Young was getting ready to replace you know, one of the goats. And, and, and probably, but Green Bay did get a backup eventually. Eventually. Jordan Love, who, I don't know. If yeah, you're a Lions e- fan, you should love that. <laughs> eventually they got one. But when you have a great quarterback that's durable, you try to build your roster other ways, I, I would think. Ah, uh-huh. ha, ha. Caught you, brother. Uh-huh. What was Matthew Stafford's M.O. the first two to three years of his career? Injury prone. Well, first two to three, and, and it was it was unfair, but he got injured. Well, I, I blame that on the offensive line because they didn't have a very good offensive line in the first two three years, right? True, but the bottom line <laughs> is they no, they did not. <laughs> exactly. The bottom line is they never had a backup for him. But he put up all time great numbers. You can, you can, you can get away with not having a backup, um, a good backup, or at least a you know, what you would call a serviceable backup. If you have a guy that's playing the way, okay. Caught you again, Buckethead. No, no, head. who's, who's, um, let's, let's just go around the league and see who, who's um, Herbert's backup in San Diego. Don't know, don't care. Oh, no, we, we don't know, right? But Matthew Staff, how many playoff games did he win for the Detroit Lions? That's not. That's besides the that point. That would be Zetis. Yeah, but that wasn't all his fault. Because it wasn't. We, we saw what happened when he got a complete team and went to some, went somewhere else. He won a Super Bowl. He was with the real team. Hey, call it what you want. He went somewhere and they had pieces and he won a Super Bowl. Remember that. I know so, that. So that backup quarterback thing is 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 important, but it, it can be overrated. Okay. It can be, but let's say they had drafted Justin Herbert. You think he'd be starting today? And yeah. that'd be a, and that'd be an upgrade of Jared Goff? Uh, of course. Okay. So I go back to part of this is 
Matthew Stafford's fault because he didn't want to back up. So the Lions, the Lions are also under a quote unquote, and I use this very loosely because it's bullshit. A must win edict from Martha Ford. That's what they keep telling you. That is a bald faced lie. Quintricia did not have a must win edict from Martha Ford. But you read it in the papers. The people say it on radio. They say it on this damn station. There was no must win edict. Here's what Martha Ford said. Um, you know, this team has to be in playoff contention in December for them to keep their job. That's not a playoff. must win edict. That's a stay around 500, be the Lions of old, don't challenge for a championship, and you can keep your job. That's not must win. Okay, Mr. Nice Guy, is that a must win edict? It, to, to us, it's not a must win, but maybe to her, that's her way of saying it's a must win. Well, it's not a must win, brother. I'm saying to her, <laughs> maybe to her, because she, you know, to her, that's her way of I, saying this is a must win. I changed to my me, mind. To me, that's, I mean, that's okay, just, I changed my mind. I'm going to make Lindsay say something bad about somebody at some point during the show today. I'm not, what am I, what, the, what am I going to say something bad about him for? I'm just going to, you know, speak the truth. And to, well. to me, that's not a must win. To And maybe to her, that is. To each his own. Everybody says things that mean something different. And, and I don't you know, know what, what she meant. You might be right, but that's why the Lions were a joke of a franchise. The edict is, let's continue to be mediocre, and you can keep your job. <laughs> I didn't get I didn't get that out of it. Okay, let me let me repeat one more time. <clears throat> Before they drafted Jeff Okuda, because I, you know, supposedly Quintricia felt the need to get a cornerback instead of a quarterback. She comes out and says, "In order to keep your job, we must be in playoff contention in the month of December." Now, <laughs> let me tell you this. Do you know if you have a record of let's say five and six or five and seven in December, you know what you are? In playoff contention. I guess. You are I, I'm not I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that. No do you ever okay, here, here, let me let me let me help you with something. Do you ever watch the NFL ticket or NFL countdown or anything on ESPN? Yeah, absolutely. Do you ever see where they have the playoff teams, and then they have those in the hunt. Those in the hunt, and a lot of the wild card teams have losing records. But anyway, you got me off track. I guess Jeff Okuda had to be traded, and I and I tell you the financial ramifications of him leaving. Okay, we'll do that after the break when we get back. <laughs> 